Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through the ABRSM Theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets available in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. There's lots of information there that you can use as reference. There's also a page which links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books that I have available. If it is that you're working through this booklet with an aim to taking the exam, I've written a book, How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam, and it's full of tips and techniques to help you to best prepare for your time leading up to the exam and also how to best make use of your time when you're actually in the exam room taking your exam paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com, it's all there for you. If you can give me a like and a subscribe, that'd be fab. You can keep updated. There's lots more in store. I'm really enjoying this and I hope that you are too. And so let's crack on now. So we're turning in our workbook. So you need your Music Theory and Practice workbook. And turn with me to page 23. And so we're going to be revisiting the subject of scales. So really, this isn't anything new. It's just some further practice. I've refer referred to this as section H in the PDF document. Now this is quite a massive section in that... It now deals with all of the major and minor keys in both harmonic and melodic minor form and it kind of requires a flexible working knowledge of all of those major and minor keys including all of grade 1, all of grade 2 and all of grade 3 key signatures. And so before you attempt this section you may want to turn to your PDF document section H and I've given you a little test sheet to sort of like help you with your revision to make sure that you're becoming quite familiar with these keys. The information that you need to answer those questions is found a little bit further back in sheet F and there you can find all of the related major and minor key signatures with the key signatures required and it can also give you a revision on the steps to create the harmonic minor and the melodic minor scale. So everything you need to know is on sheet F. I will just say at this point that you need to have a quick working knowledge of all of these keys. And when you take the exam, you need to be able to just jot those down quickly in a list form like this. And there's a technique that you can use and it's called the circle of fifths and I've devoted a whole tutorial on YouTube to explain that so please do an extra bit of revision and look into that circle of fifths, go to the video, it, you'll find it in the cards uh, on your screen and it'll also be in the links in the description below. And it will help you to work out how to figure out how these keys relate together and how you can work out your key signatures. You really do need to have a flexible working knowledge of those keys. However, for the present, it's all here for you on sheet F. And you can just test yourself on section H just by miss filling in those little gaps just to give yourself a little test to make sure you know what you're doing. However, we'll take that now as red and I'm going to pop back to sheet F and everything we need to know will be there. And so we're just going to have to keep our eyes peeled because we're going to have to look, is it a major key signature? Is it melodic minor ascending or descending? Is it a harmonic minor? And also just watch out make sure you're in the correct clef. So this exercise one is going to be asking us an awful lot of information and there's more than one step to each question. So exercise one asks us to add the clefs and now we're asked to add a key signature. Sometimes it will say for accidentals. However, it says remember to add any accidentals which are necessary but do not add any which are not. So we need the key signature, but once the key signature is there, don't add it again as an accidental, but we will need any relevant raised sevenths or raised sixths and sevenths as an accidental. 
So, they've given us this first example of B melodic minor, which you can check that B minor is related to D major. So we need a key signature of two sharps, F sharps and C sharps. And the melodic minor form, it descends using the notes of the relative major key only. So there are no ex extra accidentals there. And so it may take you a little bit of time to work through these exercises as you keep referring back to this sheet, section F, and just double checking your information. So do take your time and work through this carefully. So press pause and work through this exercise one at your own pace. And then I shall just sort of press on through and double check those answers with you afterwards. So I'm not going to be keep referring back to this sheet in the hope that you've already done that and you're now quite confident in finding that information. So I'll just press on through after you've had a go yourself. So I'm hoping that you've pressed pause and you've had a crack at this yourself and so now I will go through this with you. So we've got two aspects to answer and possibly a third with any accidentals that we need to add. So B flat major, we need to first of all establish the clef. B flat major of course must begin on a B flat and so that must be bass clef. Now B flat major, has a key signature of B flats and E flats, so in the bass clef it would look like that. And then the major scale has nothing else to do. F harmonic minor must begin on F, and so we need a treble clef for this. Now F minor is related to A flat major, so we've got B flats, E flats, a flats and D flats in our key signature and then the harmonic minor has to have the seventh raised and so the seventh note here which is an E flat will now become an E natural to raise that as semitone. There we go. Okie dokie, next one. E major must begin and end on E of course and so this is a bass clef. And then it's got a key signature of four sharps written in the bass clef placement F, C, G, D. And that's it for the major scale. Next one, A flat major, must begin on A flat, so we need that to be treble clef. Otherwise, in bass clef, that would be a C, which would be inappropriate. And then the key signature is B flats, E flats. A flats, D flats, and then that's it. Nothing else needs to be added. Cracking on. So F sharp harmonic minor must begin and end on F sharp. And so this is the bass clef. It's related to A major, which has three sharps. F, C, G. And then the harmonic minor in both ascending and descending forms must have the seventh note raised. And so eight, seven, don't forget we're going down now, so we have to count backwards in the descending. Eight, seven, the E is raised to an E sharp. There we go. So once you get a handle on juggling all of this information, it's not actually terribly difficult. It's just kind of plate spinning all the different major and minor key signatures. Okay, pressing on. So G minor in any form, of course, must begin and end on G. So this is the treble clef. Now, G minor is related to B flat major, so we need a key signature of B flats and E flats. And then in the ascending melodic minor form, notes six and seven are raised, so the sixth at present is an E flat, and so we raise that by adding a natural, and the seventh is F natural, so we raise that by adding a sharp. Last one on this page, so E minor must begin and end on E, and so we're in treble clef. Now E minor is related to G major, so we need a key signature of F sharps. And then the harmonic minor, the seventh, 
degree of the scale, 8, 7, must be raised, and so that becomes a D sharp. We've got plenty more exercises to go at, so you'll soon develop a working knowledge juggling these key signatures. I hope that's been helpful to you. I hope um, you're enjoying this as much as I am. If you can give me a like, that would be fab. I'd really appreciate that. Do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's loads more to come. And if you visit SharonBill.com, there's lots of resources to help you there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.